If you're also a non-competitive cyclist and you've been wondering whether the Wahoo Element Bolt version 2 is worth your hard-earned shekels, you've come to the right place. I am a non-competitive cyclist, I don't race, I don't pretend to race, and I've been using the Wahoo Element Bolt version 2 for the past six months. I bought it with my own money because Wahoo wouldn't return my emails. <laughs> so if you find that you want to grab yourself one, uh, it would be a big help to the channel if you check out the Amazon links in the description. And this message from our sponsor. The most fun that I've ever had throwing a leg over a bike comes from Wabi Cycles. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more about them. As a non-competitive cyclist, I don't really care about tracking my stats or hooking my computer up to a bunch of different power meters so that I can get faster and faster until I hit the speed of light. I needed a computer for speed when I'm hosting a group ride and I tell people it's 15 miles an hour and it's actually 50 miles an hour, not 18 or 20. And for maps, so I don't have to always pull out my phone when I'm riding my bike. It just feels a lot safer. And I chose the Wahoo Element Bolt 2.0, mainly because it is the only bike computer that I found within my budget that is USB-C charging. Holy crap. Can we please get on this bike industry? Battery life on this thing is really good. I can get about two weeks to a week out of a single charge on this unit. It tells you the battery life every time you turn it off, which is super convenient, so that the battery percentage isn't taking up valuable screen space. My gripe with this thing though, it's very minor, is that it takes really long to turn on. Here, I'm turning it on now. Speed up, go. And then even after it turns on, it still takes a few more seconds to grab GPS. Something that I've found helps it grab the GPS is flipping it over to the uh, map page. I don't know why, but it does. In total, it takes about a minute and a half from booting up to being able to ride with this thing and get accurate speed and maps. It always does this dance where it it says, oh, poor GPS, and then it takes a couple seconds, and then you know it's ready to go once it says your current speed is zero. It is annoying, because when I get out the door, I do have to wait a few seconds for it to grab the GPS, but it's not a huge deal for the turn on time before I unlock my bike or before I put on my shoes when I'm getting out the door. I just turn it on. But as you can see, it has an e-ink screen. It is a color screen, which is super helpful for being able to read information really easily. The map is also colored so you can see really big roads really easily, bodies of water, rivers, or whether you're nearing up on a bike trail that you should check out. Wahoo Element Bolt version two also has a backlight so that you can read this thing at night. Another minor annoyance I have is that if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, depending on the angle that you're looking at from, uh, it can just not show up and be very hard to read. And I also chose the Wahoo Bolt because of the size. It's just the right size where it's just big enough so that you can read it easily when you're riding the bike. But it's also not too big that it looks really goofy and demands a lot of attention. The screen is pretty small though, so if it's raining, it can easily obscure the screen and you have to wipe it off before you take a look at it. Also, the Wahoo Element Bolt is operated by buttons instead of touch screen, which means you can easily operate it even when you have thick gloves on. Because these things are so popular, there's a lot of mounts available for them. Unfortunately, because, you know, just the bike GPS whole category is geared towards more competitive cyclists, there are absolutely no 26.0 or 25.4 millimeter mounts that are native. They do exist with a shim, but then they're really ugly and it's a whole thing. But I got around this problem by getting one of these uh, stem mounts where the mount bolts into the stem. They give you longer bolts and then you could just do the quarter turn have it on your bike, and then it also cleans up the cockpit so that it's not taking up any precious uh, hand real estate while also just looking really nice. And this third party stem mount also comes with a light mount underneath to even further clean up the cockpit, super cool. But for me, the Wahoo Element Bolt has made cycling a little bit more fun. The Bolt has three main features. The first is the data, speed, average speed, distance, all of that good stuff page, and you can choose how much stuff do you want displayed on your screen, whether you want a bunch of metrics or just a few metrics. I'd like to keep it just the bare essential, so speed and 
how far I've ridden. And you can customize what order these metrics appear in the app. The speed is one of the main reasons that I got this thing because I host group rides and I say, hey guys, we're riding 15 miles an hour average speed because my Strava tells me that, oh, I ride an average speed of 15 miles an hour. So in my mind, it was when I get up to speed, that's about 15 miles an hour. The last time I had a bike speedometer was when I first started riding. Needless to say, I've gone a lot faster since then. And it turns out average speed is different from when you're biking and you're up to speed. And I actually ride like between 18 to 22 miles an hour when I'm just cruising up to speed. So when I was hosting bike rides, everybody's like, Zach, can we please slow down? It's six in the morning and we're doing 20. I was like, oh. I'm sorry, like I had no idea. And then I would just have to have people who had a bike speedometer or bike GPS to lead the rides and I would have to tell them where to turn just because I had no idea how fast I was going and Strava has led me astray. And also my lack of understanding of math. <laughs> and then if you hit this button, you go to the next page, which brings you to the climbing page. This is one that I didn't think that I would like as much as I do because where I ride it's mostly flat in Sacramento, California. We call overpasses hills to give you an idea of how flat it is but the nice thing about the element bolt is that it will automatically toggle over to the hill page when it detects that you're doing a climb. It goes boo boo boop boop and then it says climb or go or whatever. And then it tells you all the metrics for the climb, how steep the grade is, how long the climb is, and your estimated time for suffering until you get to the top of your climb. And as a fixed gear rider, I really appreciate that because it really allows me to mentally prepare myself for how horrible the climb is going to be and to pace myself. And it's actually made me a better climber. Let me be clear. This is a standalone unit. You can get GPS and maps on the unit itself without having to connect to a phone. I could not find that answer and I had to buy this thing without knowing whether I could actually do that. It's a shame because it's like, I know it's a bike GPS, but I still have to question it because everything has to connect to a phone these days. And luckily this does not. You still have to connect it to a smartphone to set up the maps and download maps. But after you set it up, you do not have to connect it to a phone to get maps and your GPS location. I really wanted this thing for maps because a lot of times I travel. Right now I'm in Taiwan, before I was in Michigan, places I've never been to before. So it's nice to have a map to see where I'm going and to see if I'm on the right track to my destination. And for me, this has been a game changer. It's just made me feel a lot safer because I don't have to pull out my phone every 15 minutes to see if I've taken the right turn. It's just all right there below my face when I'm riding my bike. With that said though, it's a map, it's not GPS navigation. You can preload routes from other apps like Ride with GPS, Strava into the head unit, and then you'll get a line on the map showing you where your route is. And if you're a maniac, you could even turn on a feature where it incessantly beeps at you if you ever go off of your route for even the slightest amount. But there's no navigation on the unit itself. But for me, this has been perfect because I'm pretty dang good at directions. And so just looking at a map, I can tell exactly where I need to go. The map is pretty rudimentary. You're not getting any street names or the closest McDonald's where you could take an emergency poop. It's just lines on the map. It shows you where you are on those lines and you have to figure it out yourself if you didn't do the whole preloading thing. And for me, it has been perfect if you're really good with directions. If you're not good with directions, you might be better off just getting one of those phone mounts and having your phone as a head unit so you can still have navigation. And there's a bunch of other features that this thing does that I can't even tell you about just because I don't care about it. You can connect it to cadence meters, power meters, have it spit out routines for how fast you should be spinning and when you should do recovery rides and probably all of this globity gook that non-competitive cyclists don't care about. But the big question is, especially for non-competitive cyclists, us who, ride for fun and not for being as fast as possible all the time is should a non-competitive cyclist buy it because it is a slippery slope since it does have all those competitive focused features available to you. 
and it really depends on the kind of rider that you are and the amount of discipline that you're willing to exercise when using this device to continue to be a non-competitive cyclist. Because I used to be a person who would ride on Strava and then feel like I had to ride as fast as possible every day for 15 to 30 miles and it just wasn't realistic and it just made riding not fun. Riding became a homework assignment when I was taking it more seriously, more competitively, rather than just doing something because I really enjoyed it and puts a smile on my face. This thing does have the potential to completely ruin cycling for you and to turn you into a competitive cyclist. You have to exercise some caution, some discipline. Like, I don't like having the average kilometers or miles per hour on there because it encourages me to ride faster when I don't want to. <laughs> so instead, I keep it just with the bare bones essentials. And then even most of the time, I just have it on the map screen so that I have just speed. That's all I need. I don't need to know how long I've been riding. I don't need to know how far I've ridden until the end of the ride. All I need to know is where I'm going. The Wahoo Element Bolt is very expensive for non-competitive cyclists though. If you're just using it for speed and maps, which are things that you can just get on your phone. But for me, it was worth it because I want to use my phone less. And I do a lot of long rides where I don't always want to be pulling out Google Maps and draining my iPhone 12 mini's phone battery. And I've also done an experiment where I have completely replaced my phone with an Apple Watch Ultra just for emergency contacts. So this has become the center of my bike activities rather than my phone. And for that, it's been well worth it because I can still get maps. The Wahoo automatically syncs with my phone and then uploads it to Strava, ride with GPS, what have you. But I have a very specific use case where I travel a lot, don't like using my phone and just completely use my phone at home. And this perfectly slot into my needs. But this thing is $280 brand new plus any mounts that you need. You could be spending like 300 bucks if you don't like the stock mounts that's included in the box, which I didn't, because you'll be paying for a lot of functionality that competitive cyclists like and want, but then just completely ignoring it if you're a non-competitive person. If you're non-competitive, you're probably better off if you can deal with how it looks. That's another thing why I got this thing, because it looks nice when it's on the bike. You're probably better off just using your phone, just using Google Maps, using Strava, having a head unit on your phone, and carrying a battery bank around if your phone drains. But if you don't need maps, you can get a bike speedometer, one of those ones with the magnet that you attach to one of your spokes and then it just measures it old school and feeds it through a wire. You can get those for like 20, 30 bucks. You can get speed, distance, average speed, time, all of those features on the first page, which is the page that most people will be using most of the time for about 10% the price of this thing. One way that I've found that this head unit has taken me out of my cycling experience though, is that I glance down on it a lot more than I would like just because I'm curious to know how fast I'm going. It has me wondering if I would have more fun without this thing. Even though I feel like I'm having more fun with this thing at the moment with my current needs. Because that split second that I look down every minute, two minutes, it takes me out of the riding experience. But for me at this point in time, the Wahoo Element Bolt does make cycling more fun for me even if it does detract in some ways. But what doesn't detract from cycling at all is this message from this video sponsor. It was sponsored by Wabi Cycles. Wabi's bikes are so good that I only own one bike and it's a Wabi. Like I don't need to have N plus one bikes if all I want to do is ride my favorite bike. Part of what makes Wabi so supple and comfortable and springy and lively to ride is that they construct their bikes meticulously by hand where every millimeter and every fraction of a millimeter counts. And you know what else you get with that? You get consistent tire clearance. When they say 32C can fit, they mean 32C can fit. When they say 45C can fit on the Thunder, they mean it. There's no variance there. Their bikes are constructed out of lightweight, sturdy, and lively Reynolds 725 tubing or Columbus Spirit Tubing, which is some of the lightest and thinnest steel tubing that money can buy. Be sure to check out Wabi Cycles, linked in the description to get on the buttery fix gear of your dreams. Fix your famous shouts to Julian Corona, Brandon Black, Brent, David, Mario Perez, and Ted Anchi for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous, no matter how fast or how slow you're going.